All right, it's time to ruffle some feathers. The light rail is as divisive on the Gold Coast as Trump is in America. And stage four is gonna slice through Palm Beach all the way to the Gold Coast Airport. We're gonna dive into the pros and cons and why this is one of the hottest topics on the Gold Coast in all of its history. There's been a massive recent push by Tom Tate to get the stage four of the light rail completed before the 2032 Olympics. In order for this to happen, construction must start by the end of 2025 and the track must be completed by 2030, allowing for two years of testing before the Olympics come to town. Looking at the government's point of view first, they see the light rail as the best solution to this increasing population that is absolutely bonkers. There's 2,000 newcomers coming into the state each week, and they see it as an absolute necessity to have another public transport option to facilitate all these new people. Mark Bailey asserts that there was a 50% increase in the use of public transport when the light rail commenced. And he sees it as the best solution in getting people to hop on public transport, taking roads off the street, and making life easier for those traveling all around the Gold Coast. Doing nothing would absolutely destroy our city and would be the worst thing we could do. He believes, he even compared it to Los Angeles, the concrete jungle, to saying that if nothing is done, that we'll need big concrete overpasses, wider roads, and the beautiful community we'll love will turn into a concrete jungle. <laughs> Lastly, it's always been the government's plan to connect the light rail to the Gold Coast Airport, and this is the last step. And Mark Bailey himself has promised that there will be a stop at the Gold Coast Airport as opposed to other reports out there that you need a bus transfer in. Now we've seen the government's pro light rail point of view. There's massive arguments on the other side as well. Let's dive into them now. The first concern with the light rail has been a major lack of transparency from the government. And this is exasperated by the fact that 500 parking spots were lost from Broad Beach to Burley during construction. And this news fell under the radar with one counselor even going as far to say that there's been a cloak of secrecy hiding info from the public and non-disclosure agreements. This can happen with taxpayer money, hardened cash. They need to be in the loop and there needs to be an absolutely transparent process of what's happening, what are the benefits, what are the cons. That leads perfectly into our second con, and that is a lack of parking, lost parking, and no park and ride options. The roads are already jam-packed. It's impossible to find a park. We're in a car-dominant city, and there will be many lost car parks with both directions. Mark Bailey's promised to be two lanes. What needs to be sacrificed for that? Land resumptions and parking space. <laughs> Just if this topic couldn't get any more controversial, let's bring in Australia's sweetheart, the endangered koala. With the resumptions plan to take out part of the national park, anti-light rails think this would be a catastrophe to the already compromised koalas in this area. On the other side, the government believes it'll take less cars off the road, and that's the second leading cause of koala fatalities. Which side of the fence do you sit on? Another major issue for those opposing the light rail is overdevelopment. With each stage after it's been greenlit, having massive developments with a very generous, to say the least, application of the city code with massive relaxations. And in stage one, a government counselor even went as far to say that buildings were allowed that were four to five times higher than what should have been allowed. It's a major issue with people, especially in Palm Beach, who want to just keep that coastal charm. Another important point opposing the light rail is whether the technology is already or outdated or will be outdated by the time it's finished. With the rise of electric buses and trackless trams and all these new technologies, 
it would be important to explore all other options to see if there's a better fit that'll cause less damage and less disruption. So now you've heard the pros and cons of stage four of the light rail from Burley to the Gold Coast Airport. And it's now time to hear from you. Roast me in the comments below. I wanna hear both sides. This is a huge decision for our city going forward. And it's important to hear both sides of the argument.